We're all familiar with the idiom hindsight is 2020, and it's meaning that when one has all the information of a situation after the fact, you would have known exactly what you should have done at the time. Like how you should have bought Google stock in 2004 for $85 a share, knowing now that it's trading at $2,600 a share. In this episode, we're going to travel back in time and plonk ourselves into the year 1969 with around $60,000 and the knowledge of which 10 cars have appreciated the most between 1969 and now. Our mission is to purchase and buy these cars and put them away in our barn for retrieval and sale when we return back to now to fund our retirement. What 10 cars should we pick? Let's go shopping and find out. For our first stop in 1969, we head over to the Ford store and scope out the Torino GT. But it has to be special to make it unique and rare. And that would be checking the option boxes for the brutish R-Code 428 Super Cobra Jet engine with ram air induction, a 4-speed manual transmission, and the 430 to 1 rear differential gear ratio to get yourself one quick Ford. The Torino GT was the high-end sporty version of the Fairlane 500 that could be had with the formal hardtop, a sports roof, or a convertible. The Super Cobra Jet Torino was underrated at 330 horsepower, wink wink, but put out somewhere around 450 horsepower. Our Torino configured this way was super rare with only one of them produced with the 428 Super Cobra Jet and 430 rear end. It would have cost us around $4,700 in 1969, and today we could sell our barn stored brand new Torino GT for around $110,000. That's a gain of 2,340%. Our second stop would be at the Oldsmobile dealership to put our order in for a 1969 Oldsmobile 442. But not just any 442, as it would take a combination of rare options to ensure our Oldsmobile's unicorn status and maximum value when we return back to now. That would have to be a 442 with the W30 option and the convertible body style and a 4-speed manual transmission. Of the approximately 29,000 442s produced in 1969, only 91 of them were W30 convertibles. The W30 package included a 360 horsepower version of the 400 cubic inch engine with a cold air induction system that drew air into the carburetors from inlets located beneath the front bumper and even had the spooky Dr. Oldsmobile ad theme to help promote them. Our beautiful Oldsmobile would have set us back about $5,000 in 1969 and today is worth about $190,000. That would be a gain of 3,740%. While we're in the convertible mood, let's head next door to another GM dealer. This time we pop into the Pontiac dealership and take a look at what's up for grabs over there. Well, it seems that the A-body GTOs were all the rage back then with the Judge version, introduced in 1969, marketed as a competitor to Plymouth's Roadrunner. So let's choose a GTO Judge with a sure-to-be-rare combination of options. Ours would be the Judge Convertible with the Ram Air 4 400 cubic inch engine, a 4-speed manual transmission, pause traction, and air conditioning because we want to be both kinds of cool if we ever drive it. The Ram Air 4 was the hottest engine you could order for the GTO in 1969. It displaced 400 cubic inches and was rated at 370 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque. Option this way, the judge would have been one of 108 convertibles produced and would have cost us $4,900 in 1969. Today, we could liquidate it for around $225,000. That's a gain of 4,592%. We would have never guessed that this next car would make it to our list as one of today's most valuable. That's because it has a unique combination of options, one of which was rarely ordered, but pretty sweet nonetheless. The options we would check off would be the Formula S choice that added beefed up suspension bits and sporty body trim and graphics, and the 383 cubic inch engine. That's all pretty standard stuff and not necessarily unique. To do that, we'd add the Peter Max inspired mod package that included a cool floral pattern top, seat coverings and door trim. Oh and also neat window stickers. The mod package was probably an attempt by Plymouth to appeal to potential female Barracuda buyers, with only a handful of them produced in this configuration. How much to drive one from the dealer lot to our barn? Around $4,000 in 1969, 
which would get you about $440,000 at an auction today. A gain of 11,000%. Not bad for just adding some flower pattern trim to this peppy barracuda. How about adding a NASCAR influenced Ford creation to our collection? We're referring not to the Torino Talladega or Mercury Cyclone Spoiler 2, but to the new for 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429. The Mustang wasn't a model that was raced in NASCAR, but its engine was. It was necessary for Ford to homologate the 429 for NASCAR qualification, so they decided to shoehorn it into a Mustang for that purpose. We'd choose one of these for our collection, and make sure it was the Raven black color just because it looks so mean. It's also somewhat rare and desirable these days, with only 857 of the 429 Mustangs produced, and fetching up to $550,000 at auction for an original low mileage or no mileage boss. That's an 11,000% gain. Not a bad appreciation at all from the $5,000 we paid for this car in 1969. How about for our next one we try our luck at the Dodge dealership and bag us something with a Hemi in it? Hemi is good, right? The Charger looks nice, but how about something more… open air? The convertible option was available on the Dart, the Polara, and the Coronet. The one to choose would be the Coronet with the RT option and the 426 Hemi with a 4-speed manual transmission, of course. Our color choice would be something bold and funky and sure to be a hit on a future auction stage. Bright green metallic with a white interior. There were only 10 Coronet RT Hemi convertibles built for 1969, and only 4 of them had the 4-speed manual and would make our car quite rare and desirable in the decades to come. We would have paid around $4,800 for this car in 1969, with the Hemi option alone requiring an extra eye-bulging $717 over the base price of the RT package. Back now? we could get a cool $625,000 for this gorgeous muscle chariot, a gain of 13,021%. Of course we would have to snag one of the more legendary rides from 1969. That would be the Chevrolet Camaro Copo ZL1. This was the car that you probably wouldn't have seen on a Chevrolet dealer lot, as the car maker made it available as a special order through its fleet ordering system to get around the GM corporate mandate that only Corvettes and larger bodied cars could have engines of more than 400 cubic inches, of which the Camaro was not. What makes our Camaro a superstar is the inclusion of the all-aluminum ZL1 427 cubic inch engine that only 69 of the 1069 Copos were equipped, while the others received the solid lifter L72 version of the 427. By allowing these cars to be ordered this way, Chevrolet created an instant classic that today fetches big money whenever ownership changes hands. Brand new, this car would have cost about $7,300, which made this car hard to sell at the time due to its steep price. Recently, these have seen prices at auction climb to around $825,000, a gain of 11,301%. Your patience has paid off and you knew we were going to get to this fabled beast. No, not this one specifically, but a nicer version of it. The 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona Hemi. This Charger variant was created for homologation purposes so that it could compete and win at NASCAR races beginning in the 1969 season. And win it did. A Daytona was the first car ever to break the 200 mile per hour threshold at Talladega in the spring of 1970. Of course, it was too successful and got banned by NASCAR along with its twin, the Plymouth Superbird. The Daytona package added the huge rear stabilizer wing and the arrow cone front nose along with modification of the rear backlight area to make it flush with the Charger body panels. Of the 503 Daytonas produced, only 7 of them came with a Hemi and only 20 had the 4-speed manual transmission, the rest having the 440 Magnum beneath its sleek hood. Out the door it would have cost us around $5,500 in 1969. $900,000 is what it would take today to get this car from our barn to a collector's garage. That's a gain of 16,364%. No proper collection would be complete without the addition of a Corvette in the mix. So what Corvette version specifically would be the hottest, rarest, and most desirable from 1969? That would be the ZL1, the holy grail of Corvettes for that model year. 
The ZL-1 designation was conferred upon our Roadster Beast because of its very special engine. An all-aluminum 427 cubic inch behemoth that was underrated at 430 horsepower. This would also be the most expensive car to purchase brand new for around $10,519.69. We would estimate that this car could get us over $1 million these days as only three of these were ever built. That's a gain of 9,524%. In March of 1969, Pontiac made an option called the WS4 available for its sporty Firebird model. The WS4 performance and appearance option would get your Firebird transformed into a Trans Am, the first time the package would appear on the Firebird. Ours would be uniquely configured for maximum rareness and desirability. That would mean it would be a convertible with the 400 cubic inch Ram Air 4 engine mated to a 4-speed manual transmission. A nice white one with blue stripes and white interior is the perfect combination of colors for that early de facto Trans Am look. Our TA with this specific option mix would have been the only one produced this way. That's right, one of one. A rare bird indeed. It would have cost us around $5,000 in 1969. No tire kickers, please, when we return back to now to sell it. We'd take no less than $2 million for it, and it would sell in a heartbeat. That's a gain of 40,000%. Well, there you have it. We purchased and stored away these 10 cars in 1969 and traveled back to now. How much did our collection fetch in total to fund our retirement at the Shady Gearhead Rest Home? At today's prices, the 10 cars netted us $6,862,000, way more than an interest earning savings account would have got us, and enough to get that custom mobility chair we've had our eye on, with some left over for a lifetime supply of Werther's and Insure. That's it for now. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.